Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Emmons of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning in to the Autism Hangout feature program series, The Ask Dr. Tony Show, where everybody's favorite expert on autism and Asperger's, Dr. Tony Atwood, answers your questions. Most of these questions today, Dr. T, have been submitted by both Autism Hangout and YouTube. We're getting a larger contingent from YouTube, so we're reaching the world. Wow, that, that's, that's wonderful. I'm, <laughs> I'm amazed. I think this is an excellent idea. And uh, in fact, if you go back through some of the questions and answers, there's a treasure trove of explanations and so on. So I do recommend people to go back through past editions and yes. may have an answer to the question that you wanted to raise. Yes, and actually an Autism Hangout member, Ivo, has actually gone through and cataloged all of our last conversations, so it's available at Autism Hangout. You can find the subject matter and the particular show that we recorded where that conversation was discussed. So, thank you, Ivo. We appreciate that. Oh, I, I, I do, too. I, I think that's brilliant, actually. Thanks, Ivo. That's a lot of work on that, but I think well worthwhile for so many people. Well, and judging from the comments that we've been getting, first off, thank you for taking the time to do this, because people are genuinely finding this helpful. Now, I do have to get a bit of, a, a bit of an explanation here. We had a multitude of questions that were submitted. Unfortunately, many of those questions we have already covered in previous sessions. And since there's new questions that are treasure troves in themselves, we've eliminated some of the duplication. And these particular, this particular series tonight, we're going to be discussing all these new questions. So if you're ready, we can get started. Okay. Okay, here's the first one. Dr. Tony, is there a bias against diagnosing people with Asperger's who are doing well? I love this question. This is from Robot Green Alien at YouTube. And then he goes on to say, doesn't this rob us of role models and mentors? It's very true, actually. Um, clinicians usually only get coming through the door those that have major difficulties. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. And there are people I've known through the years who have had their issues in childhood or adolescence, and then I've lost touch with them, and sometimes they only see me when they're having problems, which gives you a biased view. And yet there are some who are doing really well, and to a certain extent, they are what we call subclinical. They've reached a point where the current diagnostic criteria don't necessarily explain their characteristics. They've sort of gone off the radar. And such individuals still have the core characteristics, but they're not having a significant detrimental effect in their daily life. Mm -hmm. And they are doing well, and they are heroes. And I do encourage people who have those characteristics to explain to fellow Aspies, what did you do, what happened, who did you meet that made you be so successful with the same characteristics? And we need those role models and mentors to give advice, because if you've been down the path of, aut of autism and Asperger's and you've got to the destination and you're successful, we want to know how did you do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second question comes from James Ellis. He says, throughout my life I've had great a great deal of difficulty dealing with people in both my private life and professionally. I've really struggled to communicate, which has caused me to become depressed and to withdraw even more. I have a four-year-old son who I suspect of having Asperger's. I believe I may have it as well. His question is, as an adult, should he be assessed and how can he go about being assessed? Now actually I'd like to combine this with the second question from Sunfell, who is also talking about the fact that a lot of people at older ages now are being diagnosed and he raises the question, do you need to be diagnosed because isn't that possibly something that could be used against you if you're looking for a job. So there's there's really three questions here. What are your thoughts about being diagnosed as an older person? Does age help an Aspie find their feet in the NT world? And then how would somebody go about being diagnosed if they chose to follow that route? Okay, if we take the first one as an adult, how would I go uh, about getting assessed for autism or Asperger's syndrome? Um, it's a question of who to. I know many people are reluctant to go to a psychiatrist because they're not mad, they're not psychotic, and they don't want to be prescribed medication and things like that. So who do I go to that understands about this but may not misinterpret and project onto me characteristics that I don't have? And for some with uh, Asperger's who have tried to get a diagnostic assessment in the past have always received diagnoses that are partially accurate anxiety or depression but never fully accurate. 
So my first answer to that is, you need to see someone who is experienced in the adult profile, how the person may have camouflaged their social confusion, and that they've seen at least 50 or more adults, and for women, at least 50 women with Asperger's syndrome, to be able to understand the characteristics, because most of the literature is based on the children. Now this may be a clinical psychologist that you see, it may be somebody from an autism association. Um, I'm not sure who in the United States may be able to do this, but they need to have broad experience. Now, what are my thoughts on about getting diagnosed as an older person? And I do this regularly at my clinic, and I often ask the person, when would you have liked the diagnosis to have been confirmed? And the vast majority say, as young as possible. Why? Well, then people would have understood me. And what the diagnosis has done often is explain traumas of the past, why you were bullied and teased, why you would say things that would upset people and that was not your intention. Suddenly, many of the things of why, why, why become because, and you now know why. There can be a resolution of past issues. You can also better understand yourself and, and also your strengths and weaknesses to help you decide what to do in terms of career and relationships and also be less depressed about yourself, either by feeling bad or artificially being someone that you're not true to. Mm -hmm. um, it also helps find your way in the Aspie world because, um, well, the, the general world, you can meet people in the Asperger community who can be your mentors. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to jobs and so on, oh, that's a very difficult one. I think you've got to be very cautious because if there's a lot of people applying for a job, whoever's doing the sorting through the applications is thinking of reasons to reject. So you've got a hundred people applying for one job. I will look for reasons to reject. Oh, Asperger's, don't know that, reject. Mm -hmm. So be very careful about doing that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no job or profession that should be impossible for someone with Asperger's. I've known them being in all sorts of areas, including psychology and psychiatry. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's up to the person to decide, would the disclosure be to my advantage or detriment? If it's to your detriment, then don't disclose it. You don't mm -hmm. have to. If you do disclose it, it's got to be done in a positive way, a way that basically goes through how my Asperger characteristics will be a benefit in this job, but also how you can support me to develop those abilities in that particular job. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think the general impression is, no matter what your age, and I've diagnosed people in their 80s, who may not have long to live, and they say, I can now have closure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard you say that in past conversations that knowledge is power, so why not learn if you're in this position? Because if you are in this position, rather than being a second-rate NT, why not be a first-rate Aspie? Oh, absolutely, yes. I just think that bears reinforcing.